Arsenal have recorded a statement victory in the Champions League. They have beaten Paris Saint-Germain comfortably by two goals to nil. And in this video, we're going to be breaking down what Arsenal did so well to get such a good result against a top European side. For a few games now, Arsenal have had to try to change the way they build up play to really compensate for the fact that Martin Odegaard is not in their side. Being their main playmaker, Arsenal needed to look for a different avenue to be able to help them go forwards. And sometimes that includes exploiting the opposition's weakness, and they found one in Paris Saint-Germain's midfield three. While PSG set up with a midfield three, they didn't change to a different defensive position, much like Arsenal. When Arsenal play, they set up in a 4-4-2 or a 4-2-4. PSG kept their midfield three and, if anything, just tried to flatten that midfield three to be a little bit more defensive. The problem that they have with this is it means that there is a real difficulty in trying to block off space out wide. And this is what Arsenal did to really good effect. They overloaded certain areas of the pitch. And they did this by putting Calafuri into midfield, inverting him to be next to Thomas Partey, which naturally pushed Declan Rice up into a higher midfield position. Now what this then allowed Arsenal to do is move Leandro Trossard just over to that left-hand side a touch. And already, what have you got if you move Calafuri just ahead a touch? You've now got a 4v3 in Arsenal's favour. Three Paris Saint-Germain players, four Arsenal players. Now what this does, just inherently, is it forces Vitinha to take note of this, and it pushes him over to try and help with the numbers. But that also has a knock-on effect, because it leaves Joao Neves almost in no man's land. And it means that when Arsenal decide to switch play, and then utilise Bakayo Saka, arguably one of their major threats. He has a free 1v1 with Nuno Mendes. And because of the way that PSG set up their midfield three, with Zaire Emery and Neves being a little bit further ahead than Vitinha, it means that there is a lot of space for Bakayo Saka to exploit right here. And this is exactly the kind of situation that I'm talking about. So, you've got Leandro Trossard out on this left-hand side. This has allowed Martinelli to come in field. Calafiori has almost taken up that Deccan Rice role and started to move forwards. He's obviously swapped Deccan Rice and then allowed for them to be still defensively resolute. Look at the run that Kai Havertz made, but one thing I really want to highlight is the role of Bakayo Saka right here. Now, he's not necessarily involved in play, but what ends up happening is the ball goes to Calafiori, who then switches it to Saka, which gives him a free 1v1 against Nuno Mendes. And just look at the positions of PSG's midfielders. So you've got Vitinha right here, you've got Joao Neves, and you've got Zara Emery. Now, they're off your screen right now, but I can just show you them here. Look, they're completely out of play. There's the three of them. You've got one, two, three, and Arsenal have really taken that space and taken that momentum, but at the same time, being able to shift it over to this right-hand side, and look at the amount of space that Bakayo Saka's in. It's absolutely fantastic. And then, what am I talking about as well? I'm talking about the space that's in that inside channel. Because PSG didn't flood this area because of the makeup of their midfield three, it meant that Bakaya Saka had this option. And although he decides to take one touch inside and then take a shot, I believe he could even have driven a little bit further. But one thing that's really impressive to me in this particular scenario are all the different mechanics that Arsenal have going on from an attacking point of view. So let's just break those down real quick. You've got Calafuri on the edge of the box. Again, like I said, almost playing that Declan Rice role. Gabriel Martinelli is about to make a run to the front post. You've got Kai Havertz at the back post who's there for a cross if he ever needs to. And Urien Timber is on his bike ready to create an overlapping run to take away Nuno Mendes. All of these mechanics are happening simultaneously and it's just credit to the way that Arteta has been able to build up this side to really create these habits and that's exactly what they are, they're habits. It just so happens that Bakayo Saka decides to try and take a shot, but it's brilliantly worked and brilliantly engineered. And it's down to the overload on this left-hand side. You can see these players here. And you've also got the flexibility out on this right-hand side with Bakayo Saka. As I said, he takes the shot. It doesn't necessarily amount to too much, but it's brilliant play from Arsenal and was a telltale sign of things to come. 
I mentioned a moment ago about Zyremi and João Neves being on a different line or a different plane to Vitinha, and this caused a big problem for Paris Saint-Germain. It meant that Vitinha had to cover a lot of the defensive aspects really close to his back line. And what it meant is that there were big pockets of space that were free on either side of him. And it forced Zaire Emery and Neves to drop back into these spaces to try and fill them. But if they didn't, it meant that Arsenal could exploit. And that is exactly what Leandro Trossard did. In moving over to this Arsenal left-hand side, the PSG right-hand side, it meant that Trossard was then able to drive with the ball through into this pocket of space. And this is exactly what happened for Arsenal's first goal. In Kai Havertz, you have a player with strength, height, and the ability to really attack a ball. So if you get a player into this position, like Leandro Trossard, you've now got Kai Havertz with the ability to make a run through into the box. But it happens because of the space that is afforded to Trossard on this right center channel for PSG and the left center channel for Arsenal. He exploited that space brilliantly and it was only a matter of perfecting the cross to really get it and get and create a big opportunity. And the goal was just perfectly executed. Let's take a look and break this down. So you've got Martinelli out on this left hand side, Trossard in field driving, but he's also moved over to this left hand channel, overloading the side as well. You've got Calafuri making those runs as well, Declan Rice dropping back a little bit deeper. I'm imagining that Mikel Arteta was rather concerned about the counter-attack from PSG, which is why he had Declan Rice and Thomas Partey almost sat next to each other on a number of occasions, which allowed Calafuri to really take that space, because the space was afforded. And again, remember those planes that I was talking about. You've got Zara Emery, you've got Joao Neves, and you've got Vitinha. The difference in between these three was night and day, and it meant that the opportunity and spaces that Trossard and Saka had to move into was just fantastic for Arsenal and it's brilliant and as it gets moved on you need to have a better challenge from PSG but it's brilliant from Trossard because he commits Vitinha. Vitinha had to move across and instead you've got Kai Havertz who is in acres of space ready to make a move into that post. Again this is the PSG back four it's quite a good line you still haven't got your two midfielders who are able to come and contest. Joao Neves isn't aware of Kai Havertz and you've also got Kai Osaka out really far wide on this right hand side again ready to isolate that duel with Nuno Mendes. Trossard ends up cutting inside and then you're looking for that run for Kai Havertz. Just note the Kai Osaka here look how free he is out on this far post really really well done again like I said Trossard really good cross and then Kai Havertz makes his move once he realizes that Trossard could make a movement Trossard picks his head up really cleverly and then it's about Havertz, it's about making that run, it's about making that cross as well from Trossard. It is fantastic, but it's the channel that's been afforded to him that gives him the time and space to be able to do so. The PSG midfielders, although they are now set in position, do not have enough time to be able to block the cross and that will be their undoing because Kai Havertz has proven himself to be very, very good in the air, especially at the Emirates. I believe he is now scored in six consecutive games at home for Arsenal which is very very good and now it's all about the finish because I think this is really brave from Kai Havertz it's really really brave he leaps tall he guts up and he actually beats Donnarumma to the ball it's really well done look at that connection there just absolutely fantastic brilliant work from him and it ends up falling into the net and he actually scores with his back to goal which I think is quite funny but it's excellently executed from Arsenal who really exploited those spaces in those inside channels from Paris Saint-Germain. The stats will indicate that PSG had far more possession they will also say that PSG had more shots but when you know that PSG only had two shots on target and in fact they only had an XG of 0.4 Arsenal did something very, very well, and that was relying upon their defensive shape, especially in the second half. This frustrated PSG to the point where it forced Luis Enrique to make two changes, Colomuani coming on and Fabian Ruiz, which did change the game to a certain extent, but it still left Arsenal in a very dominant position, really comfortable, almost keeping PSG at arm's length, dominating their 1v1 duels with Saliba and Gabriel, and allowing for a real compactness in the centre of the pitch to stop PSG from progressing through. Joao Neves and Zara Emery really failed to make any kind of breakthrough through the centre of the pitch, and even out wide, Kivior coming on for Timber, and Calafuri out on this right-back slot, 
still did a very, very good job. This is an Arsenal side that is very comfortable in defending now. And in fact, Arsenal and Arteta, I think, actually really focuses on that and, and puts it to the forefront of his mind, making sure that they do not concede, especially in Europe. And this was a fantastic performance that showed Arsenal's maturity, it showed Arsenal's quality, but it also showed their resilience under pressure. And while I didn't think that PSG created all too much, Arsenal's defensive solidity shone through, and they were still dominant throughout, even without the ball. Before we wrap up, let's finally take a look at the second goal, and this was a piece of genius as well. Arsenal are fantastic at set pieces, we know this, and PSG should have been aware of this as well before giving away a couple of silly fouls. However, do not let that take anything away from what Arsenal do here, it's so, so good. So, one thing I need you to look at is look at the amount of PSG players here and look at the amount of Arsenal players. They're all piled toward the back post. Now, what PSG cannot do is then move out of this space to contest these Arsenal players. They can't do that. And it's so, so clever because it means that the Arsenal players are always going to get a run on. But at the same time, we need to take a look at the micro adjustments that these Arsenal players make while having their runs towards the front post or towards the center of the goal. So, I want you to take a look at this. Look at Thomas Partey. Thomas Partey is gesturing to Bukayo Saka, who's taking the free kick, and he lifts his hand up, and he almost points downwards, indicating to Bukayo Saka, I believe, that he should play a low free kick. Now, a lot of people looked at this free kick and said, Bukayo Saka mishit it. It wasn't correct. I think it was intentional. I think it was intentional to go low. I think it was intentional to go to the far post. And the reason why I say that is due to the movement that these Arsenal players make. One goes round towards the front post, one goes round towards the centre, one follows, and then you've got a couple at the back post here. It's really, really well done. And as we move this forwards, you've now got the Arsenal players. Once that gesture has been made, you've got the Arsenal players now moving. Bakayo Saka sends his signal here. You can't quite see that, so we'll just zoom in here. Bakayo Saka sends a signal, lifts his hand up, and the Arsenal players are ready to go. But it's all about that movement. It's all about the movement to go through across the front post martin lee has the first job his job is to now block off barkala and he does this not by touching him not by moving he actually gestures to try and kick the ball but he misses it and i believe he misses it deliberately this is step one that's done really really well step two as they go forwards is once martin lee misses the ball you've now got these two You've got thomas Partey, who's going to make a play for the ball and he actually misses the ball and when he misses the ball, you've got Martinelli and Thomas Partey right here. And they go for the ball. And I'm not necessarily sure whether they mean to try and kick it or not. Perhaps they do, perhaps they don't. But it ends up causing Donnarumma a number of issues. Because he can't dive. If he dives and it just goes into the net, it's going to look bad on him. He can't dive. He has to wait. He has to wait as long as possible. And it just so happens that it had enough whip, it had enough speed, that he was able to go in the net. But there are so many different things, so many different micro points that can be looked at for this Arsenal goal that I think is just brilliant. Their set-piece coach needs some kind of a raise because he is doing a fantastic job. And Arsenal are executing it to perfection. It's yet again another fantastic and brilliant goal. And look at Donnarumma, he can't do anything about it. It's poorly defended from PSG, but you almost can't really blame them because of how well executed this Arsenal set piece was. Just brilliant from Arsenal, who, in my mind, dominated PSG, whether it was with the ball or without the ball. They were absolutely fantastic. And as I said earlier, made a statement win in Europe. But of course, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. What did you think about Arsenal? What did you think about PSG? And how far can Arsenal go in the Champions League? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And I hope to see you in the next one. But until then, my friends, take care.